Hey game designers, this is our fifth tutorial in GoFruit. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to do three things. We're going to add our own doors. We're going to add our own keys. And we're going to link those keys to those doors. And then we're going to teach you how to make a liquid tile to make it look uh, awesome. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, doors and keys will appear um, near the top. You'll see them right here. So uh, let's go ahead and check out what layers we have here. And do we have one for doors and keys? And the answer is yes, we do have a layers for doors and keys. Make sure you click on that. And we're going to go ahead and drag uh, two uh, doors into our secret layer. So our secret layer has um, two, an exit and an entrance. I'm going to go ahead and just grab a door and something like this. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and make the other door uh, like this. I'm going to go ahead and change the terrain a little bit just so that uh, it will match up with the floor. So I'm just going to go to the green terrain layer and use my brush tool. Okay, right there, right there. All right, I'm going to go back to my door here and maybe move it somewhere like that. Okay, all right, and let's go ahead and then add some keys. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, make sure that you understand that the doors have uh, two different or two additional properties. One of them is the uh, door tag, which is its tag, and the player tag, who can open the door. So we're going to change uh, the door tag since there's already a door called uh, a door tag that has door as its tag, which is over here. It already has the tag door. We're going to go over here and go ahead and rename this one to door two and this one to door three. Okay. Now you can also use the uh, flipped uh, property, which makes the door flip to the other side. So it looks like the, uh, the sprite uh, aims the other way. But for now, this looks good. Let's go ahead and add two keys. So it doesn't matter which key you use, but I think the sprites kind of lend itself to one and the other. I think this key right here is meant to open this door. And this key card right here is meant to open this door. Now let's go look at the keys. Again, we're in the doors and keys layer. The keys have two additional properties as well. Who can pick up the key and who can open the door. So in this case, uh, the door tag has to match. So this key is, wants to open this door, it has to change to door two. So that it matches the door two tag here. And this key card over here has to match this door if it wants to open this door. And this door has to tag door three. So we go back to the key and make it door three. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if, um, we were able to create our own keys and we were able to link them. Oh, I was able to jump in there. So you can see that I opened the door by just touching it. I'm gonna grab the key card here and open the door there. Okay, so there's that part of the lesson. So the next part is uh, adding some lava tiles. So right here looks like a good place to add a lava pit. I'm going to scroll down on the prefabs, and we have a liquid tile layer here. So suppose that I want to make a uh, layer of lava here. Um, let's see inside our layers if we have a layer for lava, and it looks like we do not. Right? There's nothing that says liquid tiles or lava. So let's go ahead and make a layer called liquid tile layer here. I'm going to click on the triple dot and rename liquid tile layer or just liquid tile. And we're going to go ahead and leave it at the top for now until we decide uh, how we want this ordered compared to all the other layers. 
let's go ahead and drag a liquid tile here. And I'm going to use the scale tool and scale it. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a uh, zoom in and see uh, how the sprite looks. So you can see here that if I don't push it to the left enough, it's going to have these little white pixelated uh, pixels here. But the problem is if I move it to the left, and to cover up all the white tiles, I run into a different issue. Now, if you're having a hard time moving the exact number of pixels that you want, you can actually just go to the properties window and change the X position, which goes left and right. So let's go like 1345. And that's not quite what I want. So let's try 1340. Okay, 40 is too much. 42. Okay. So you can see, no matter how well I do it, um, you, can, you can see in this example right here that the lava doesn't really mesh up behind the uh, the terrain layer like we would want, right? It creates like an overlap. So it looks very sloppy, doesn't look very uh, natural at all. So how do we solve this problem? Well, what we could do is take the liquid tile layer and put it behind our grass terrain layer. So I'm going to left click and drag this liquid tile layer behind the grass layer. And now you can see that even if I enlarge it here, it's not going to affect uh, the way it looks. It's going to basically give it the exact appeal that we want. So let's go ahead and put it here, right? So now our liquid tile layers are behind our grass terrain layer. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if this is what we want it to look like. So we're here at the liquid tile layer and it looks nice. It looks like it's behind the rocks that we wanted. But looks what happens when I go into the lava. Right? So let's go ahead and explain what happened. When I jumped into here, my player is on the player layer, which is way up here. And the liquid tile layer is down here. So my player, because of the layering, will appear in front of the lava, which makes it look very silly. It doesn't look like I'm actually in the lava. It looks like I'm standing way, way, way in front of the lava, which is not what's actually happening. So how do we fix this problem? Well, the solution is, well, to create two layers. You want one layer to appear behind the rocks, and you want one layer to appear in front of the rocks. So we're going to go here, and we're going to rename the first uh, layer that we created, Liquid Tile Back. And we're going to create another layer, new layer, and we're going to rename it Liquid Tile Front. Okay. So now that we have a Liquid Tile Front, Let's go ahead and move that in front of the player. And let's go ahead and add a liquid tile here. But this time, we can afford to be not uh, butting up against the, um, the terrain layer because we already have a layer that goes behind it. Now, you do want to be careful with the, uh, the height because you don't want the feet of the player to show up here. right? But now, I have a liquid tile that's in the front. So I have one layer in the front and one layer in the back. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if this is the effect we want. And let's see if it gives that feeling of depth inside this lava. Right? And it looks like I have drowned in lava. Okay? So this looks good. Um, the only critique I would have is that the two layers are having the same animation. So the layer in the uh, back one is kind of moving with the layer in the front one, and that makes it look less realistic. So let's go ahead and, uh, if you want, this is optional, I would delete the liquid tile layer in the back, right? And I would take a straight version of it just to create a water level that makes it look like it's in the horizon. 
right? So we're still kind of covering our bases. We're still covering the entire background and it still has that depth, but now um, it won't have this kind of double animation that's uh, the same. And that does it for this tutorial. Let's go ahead and go to File and Save Game. And I'll see you guys next video.